All right, finally back to the project, and hopefully I can finish this up. Um, just haven't been around for a while. I've been crazy at work, so I really haven't uh, had any, a whole lot of free time to play with this. But hopefully I can get this done um, and up pretty soon. So this is going to be the basic configuration of what we got going on here. Um, the combs, collector combs here, are going to be mounted... Uh, this this is just a uh, square block of oak um, and they need to be mounted up here what, what, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna take the same material that we're using for our axles which is that um, that little driveway marker rod and I'm gonna drill it half or a drill hole halfway down these blocks and then and I'm gonna sink this into the block and leave it about two inches up from the top. I'm going to take a piece of half inch um, brass, I'm going to drill a one inch hole in the bottom of it, or one inch deep hole in the bottom of it, and sit it on that rod and epoxy it to it. Now that's going to do two things. Um, that's going to allow a gap, an insulator between the wood and that rod. Um, wood insulates electricity to a point but depending on your voltage it'll bleed through which is why telephone poles and stuff if you look at the power lines on the top are actually where they touch they're never actually touching the telephone lines they're um, on these giant glass insulating discs so that and our collector is going to sit across the top of that on center line here and I'm going to solder this I'm going to cut a groove in that half inch uh, rod and this is going to be soldered in place. Now, from that, at some point, I don't know yet if I'm going to drill and tap a hole in the top or if I'm going to split the rod into two pieces. Um, we're going to have a wire, which I'm going to actually found in my uh, parts box outside, an old, well, it's actually new, but never used um, battery cable for a car. And I'm going to, I'm going to use this. And I cut this off. I have smaller, uh, smaller connectors for them, and basically that's going to loop from here right into the top of the Leiden jars. There's going to be a a screw in the cap there, straight through that we're going to be able to uh, hook our cable up to, and then from the bottom of that screw is going to be our wire touching the inside of the Leiden jar. Um, and then our pulleys are going to be made from these wheels here, which I've already got one out. And we're going to cut those down on the lathe to fit our belt. So the first thing I'm going to start making is those collector rods. Um, I need to get all this squared away and figure out exactly where the rest of it's going to fall into place. So to drill the hole, I want to get it as on center and straight as possible. So we're actually going to do it in the lathe in a four-jaw chuck. Um, you don't really have to, but I got the lay. You can use a drill press or even a hand drill if you have a steady hand and can get the hole straight. But I got a lathe, so what the hell am I so I'll use it. So I'm gonna drill that for a nice snug fit to this rod. I still and I'm not gonna I'm not going to uh, bond this rod to this block. I want to be able to twist it a little bit to align it, but it's gonna be tight enough so that when I twist it, it'll stay in place. So that's pretty much the plan. I know you probably can't visualize what's going on right now, but once we start get going, we should be able to see how it's all going to fall into place. And hopefully my plan works out the way I want to. It should, at least in my mind it does. So let's get going on drilling those holes. I have that uh, that oak piece in my four-jaw chuck just uh, kind of in there by eye. Uh, using the rings, so we're off a little bit. Uh, this is just some of that plastic card there that I have underneath the jaw, so I don't make a divot in the the uh, the wood. Now I figured this would be a good opportunity just to show you how to um, square up square stock in a four jaw. Now square stock is a little bit more of uh, a different challenge than regular round stock. Round stock, pop your indicator on it eyeball center, it doesn't really matter if you're exactly on center because you're reading a relative reading and not touching your dial, your indicator. And then you just work your jaws back and forth until you get to your run out. Now, 
the square stock is a little bit different of a challenge because you have a, a perfectly vertical side and if you're not perfectly if you don't have this jaw perfect perfectly um, uh, parallel to the floor here is you're gonna get uh, you're gonna be reading a different spot on the stock on each side so how do you get around that well first of all do like you would with regular round stock is eyeball center which was done now if you look you want to rock your stock back and forth now if you take a peek at the dial indicator here you can see where we are there it'll go down I'm pulling towards me and right there it stops and it goes back up do the same thing by pushing away right there it stops and goes back up so you want to do that for each side and right where it stops that's where you want to take your reading that way there you'll be reading the same spot on each side and you'll be able to adjust your run out um, from there so let's take the way the way I like to do four jaws is I use two chuck keys here and I work it work each side against each other so in other words just to show you so we'll set that at zero and then we'll go to the opposite jaw here we'll move it until we see it stop which we're right there which on that we are mine plus 44 and looking at the lines this jaw is further in so I got to come back towards me so I will have that distance so I will bring this down to 22 so loosen this one tighten the opposite jaw loosen this back jaw tighten this front one loosen tighten loosen tighten until I get to 22 now I'll go to the next here wiggle it until we stop okay there's my zero and go to the opposite jaw can see that the this jaw here is further in so we to come out towards me and right now we're reading fifty-three we'll call that fifty-four so I want to half that distance set that at zero and we'll check all our sides here I got the glare right where the zero is hang on all right you can see we're right pretty much at the zero there actually we're minus one the next side here plus three plus one plus one there you go. You can see by just adjusting those jaws that first time around, we're within pretty much three thousandths, which for what we're doing is more than enough. So I'm going to leave it there and uh, just make sure these are snugged up. And we can even double check that now. Plus one. Minus one, plus two, plus one. So we're even closer now that we've snugged it up. So that's plenty good for what we're doing. And um, I can drill that hole here. I want to go roughly about halfway through. So this is a six inch piece. So we're about three inches in. 
Um, I'll actually just put a piece of tape on the drill bit as a mark. It's easier than using the graduations on the dial. Um, actually, I don't even think I have three inches of travel on this. Yeah. Forgot about that. I only have about two and a half inches or so of travel. Um, or two and two and three quarter inches of travel. So, uh, we'll just use all the travel I have in, in the, the, uh, the tailstock here to drill that hole. And, uh, we'll be able to press everything in. Okay, we've got the second piece in there, and um, first one's all nice and drilled. So, I'm going to do the same thing. We have it in there by eyeball. I'm going to do the dial indicator there. i got a little bit of a gap there on the bottom. I'm not flush up against this, so I don't know how straight that saw cut is. So, we'll do this at zero here. Let me zoom in so you can see what the hell I'm doing. Stop right about there. Set it at zero. Go to the opposite side here. I think we're plus 20. So we'll bring it in by 10. side over. Actually, that's right at 10. I wonder how close we are with everything. That's right at 10. Seven and 10. So we're within about three thousandths. Set it to zero and uh, show you here. Let me back it off so you can see the zero mark a little bit better. So we're at zero on one side, next side over, we're at zero, next side over, plus one, and next side over, minus two. So we're pretty good with that. You can double check. Just by eyeball here, make sure we're... center and we look pretty good so even though it is wood I am going to center drill it because that will give me a little bit of a of a countersink on the top uh, to allow me to easily push the uh, piece of um, fiberglass in there so Should be going a little bit faster because it just is wood to push those chips out further, but I don't want this thing to go flying off that chuck, so I'm just taking it easy. That's that. And I'm just gonna go slightly larger to give a nice fit. Yep, 
just slightly larger and we'll have a nice fit in there. Nice snug fit. I got a piece of half inch brass in my collet. I have uh, both sides faced and cleaned off. Now I want to make a notch to be able to fit this. Now the tip of this um, potting tool here is about 90, 95 thousandths wide. So, and uh, that's obviously a square. This is obviously round. So I'm going to go an inch and a half from the end. That'll get me on center once I get everything together. And I'm going to make a notch. The diameter of the uh, bar on the, the comb here is 135,000. So I'm just going to make a notch 135,000 steep. And I'm going to round it out with uh, a small round needle file. It does have a handle on it. A wooden handle. So I'm not going to get it in the palm. Um, usually you'll see them like this just with a knurled end. I um, have a set that has a wooden handle and I have a set like this that'll fit into almost like an exacto handle. Um, they fit right into there. That way you don't get stabbed. So I'll go an inch and a half from the end here. Pretty good right there. And there we go. Be able to solder that right in place. Now I'll make a twin of this. Um, and we have to drill one inch deep in the bottom by 5 16 to be able to take the rod here in the bottom of that shaft. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll make another one of these and uh, we'll decide if we're gonna drill and tap this for the cable once we get everything kind of mocked up over there. Okay we got our basic layout done here. Um, this is the rod that we just made. 
You got the notch to fit the collector comb. One inch deep hole in the bottom to accept a peg of the um, fiberglass rod. Which if I can... My hands are slippery at the moment. Let me see if this one will come out. So that's just going to sit in there, in that hole. It's nice and snug, but I can still turn it. And this piece here is going to get epoxied to the top. So now I have an insulating gap, so I'm not touching the wood. And that, those combs are going to fit right into that notch there. And we can solder them into place. I'm just going to make sure that we're level, which I'll probably make some sort of jig just to hold it in place while I solder it. And I have decided that that's all going to be like that. This is going to be our Leiden jaw. Obviously, it's going to sit probably right about there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill and tap a quarter twenty hole in the top to accept a quarter twenty screw, which will take up pretty much that whole half inch diameter. And this is a solder on uh, electrical connector here, which will cut off this big bulky one and use this much smaller one on this battery cable. And we'll have that going pretty much like that right into the jar with another quarter 20 screw sticking straight up here to allow me to put that on there and also to tighten it down instead of using the nut this is I got in the uh, lighting department the hardware store that will tighten it down and through the middle of this we will have our rods for our our discharge rods coming right through the middle and we'll be able to adjust and move them in and out and uh, so that's pretty much the way we're going to do it. Now, I don't know if I'm going to have, I may have to, in the tip of this, run a set screw for those rods. I'm not quite sure yet. Um, if I can make, be, be able to make the, the um, actual hole tight enough for the rod that we're going to use, I'm not quite sure yet. But that's, that, that's the basic premise. So, um, right now, I don't quite want to get this these collectors in place yet because um, I don't want to damage them for any reason so that'll be one of the last things we'll do when we go run into the lathe real quick drill a hole and tap it for a screw over here um, which I'm not going to show that because you've seen me drill and tap plenty of times but we'll just drill and trap, uh, tap a hole for that and then we'll probably, I'll probably start on the uh, pulleys for the, the discs and um, basically so we'll finish up all of that part first and then mm. the last thing we'll do is hook in our Leiden jars and our discharge rods. Alright so let me just drill and tap those and then I'll film me making a um, nice pulley out of this. All right, now I'm going to make the pulleys so I had to separate the wheel from the rest of the caster here. And I just did it just like you would drill out a rivet. Just drilled the, uh, the little head off the pin, pull the pin out, wheel comes out. Now, if it shows well up on camera, but you can see this inside little hub here is thicker than the outside here. So I need to make that all straight. Um, and inside here, I know you can't see it, I already made one, but there's a metal hub in there. So what I did is I took this outside face down right to the inside uh, until this inside little um, boss here disappeared, this little lime, and that took it right down to the hub and made it all flat, and then I was able to put the groove in it. Now, I'm going to show you how I was able to face this off straight. With First, just took 
my jaws off here. And this little raised boss fits perfectly. In the through hole of the chuck and we're just going to be using the master jaws here they stick up about an eighth of an inch or so and we're just just going to grab it with those just enough to hold it steady so you can't turn it now because of the way we're holding it light cuts are the order of the day so Put my facing bit in here. Now we got to cut the groove for the gas, um, uh, the gasket we'll be using as a belt. So I got to figure out you need a way to be able to grab the edges but leave you enough room to be able to um, get the middle to make the groove. So what I got here is just a uh, quarter inch rod that's threaded and I'm going to nut and push that right on to there and we're going to put another nut on the other side here to lock it 
Now, as you notice, I put those jaws back in. Now I'm going to grab this nut on the back here with the jaws, the tips of the jaws, and I'm going to let this edge rest against the front of the jaws. Now that's going to give us a nice grip and a flat surface to register ourselves. And then we'll just give this nut here a nice snug. Now you can see we're wobbling a little bit on the nut here, but as far as wiggling, running out this way, we're good. Um, that hole in the middle of this actually is slightly bigger than a quarter inch, so there's a little bit of room for this rod to float. That's where you're getting that run out. Now to do the groove, I have a bit, let me zoom in here for you. that I ground to the shape of the, uh, the gasket that we're going to be using as a belt. And if you, you probably can't see, but there's a mold seam on this gasket right here, which is halfway through. I'm going to make that groove just deep enough to come up to that mold seam. And I'm going to use this mold seam in the middle of the wheel here as my guide for center. So basically I'm going to plunge in and then I'll move over just a little bit just to give enough relief so that that belt isn't pinched. And then give a little relief on the other side just so it doesn't pinch and should have a nice horseshoe groove in there. depth real quick. It looks pretty good. I'll get you a close up of that. Alright, that's it right there. And our belt. If you can, let me see if I can get it to focus on the side of it. Right there is that mold seam that I was using as a guide, and that makes it fit halfway through. So that's pretty much our pulley there. Now, this hole has to be enlarged to 5 16 to be able to slip over that um, the axle there, and then we'll also have to have two holes in this to be able to accept um, some screws because this is going to need to be screwed to those to the actual uh, discs and the way I'll do that is I'll screw from the disc out uh, with a, a countersunk screw into into this. This is soft enough that I'm just going to need a pilot hole and it should grip really good. I have to drill the holes in the disc to be able to mount the pulleys to it. So I have it marked out now. It's basically 40 thousandths from the edge to um, to the hole, from the edge of this hole to where I'm going to put the screw. So there are two of those. And I'm going to be using <clears throat> number six uh, screws countersunk. So, just going to drill our hole. This is just a clearance hole. Oh, 
that should clear the screw. Which it does. So now we have to countersink those, and I want to make sure that the head is well below the surface because those two discs are going to pretty much be touching each other. This is just a single hole countersink here. Just a hair more. Those are nice and below the surface now. Alright, so let's mount this up to the pulley. Alright, we got those mounted to the, uh, the discs here. And you can see the other side here. That click that you're hearing, um, I think one of the screws is just out a hair more than it should be. Uh, plus there's going to be a small little thin plastic uh, washer in there just to keep those heads from uh, from hitting those countersunk holes if they're off a little bit. Um, but that's pretty much the way that's going to work. So I'm going to end this video right here for now and I'm going to continue on and the next one will be um, Finishing the lighting jars and um, yeah, the lighting jars and mounting everything up. Uh, basically, everything's pretty much done except for uh, the two brushes, which uh, are pretty easy to do, and uh, just screwing everything together. So, next video is definitely going to be the last one, and we'll get to see if this thing makes a spark.